suffering and alone. Tens of thousands from Iraq's Yazidi minority are homeless. They know the full horrors of Islamic State after fighters forced them off their land last month. But the worst fate was for those who fell into IS hands. Rasho Elias and his sons tried to defend their village against the heavily armed militants. They bought valuable time for others to escape. But they couldn't help his married daughter Adla. She was held captive with other women and girls, and she's haunted by what she went through. Every day or two, men would come in and make us take off our headscarves so they could choose which of us they wanted. Many were raped. They were dragged out of the house by their hair, she says. We don't know what became of them. Adler's one of the very few who managed to escape. When Yazidi people fled from Islamic State in early August, they were stranded on the barren slopes of Mount Sinjar. When help finally arrived, they were desperate. And now the Yazidi are asking for support to bring back their missing loved ones. <laughs> Families have drawn up lists of those they're searching for. Human rights activists know of over 5,000 men, women and children who were taken. <laughs> this young woman was tortured and starved. She got away during airstrikes targeting IS and walked for three days to find safety. They sell girls as young as nine, she says. Some men bought many at once. Two of my friends hanged themselves from the ceiling fans and one slit her wrists rather than be sold for sex. <laughs> and that's too much for her aunt to bear. Her other two daughters are still missing. <laughs> they took all our girls. It's all we care about. The world must help us. Islamic State fighters are trading in people. Young girls are treated as spoils of war and scattered across the region. Families here worry that if they're not found soon, they may never see them again. Yolande Nell, BBC News, Northern Iraq.